G'day, I made a mistake and that mistake means that every video that I've made about oxalic acid extended release strips is wrong. In this video, I'm going to explain what I got wrong and what I'm going to do about it. The story starts when I had a visit from Russell from Bequip New Zealand. Russell sells all of the components necessary to make oxalic acid strips and with those packs he also sells instructions on how to mix the oxalic acid and glycerin. And his instructions, he pointed out to me, very nicely by the way, are different from the way I do it. And he explained what he thought I'd done wrong. Now I listened intently to what Russell said because bearing in mind that he's in the industry and making products for this particular treatment of beehives, he knows what he's talking about. He's very knowledgeable. So I listened hard, I acknowledged the key point that he made, which I'll explain in a minute, and then after he left, I pondered it some more, I did some more uh, investigation, I did some maths, and then I came to uh, understand the whole matter a lot better. I'm going to try and explain it here in this video, but to be fair, there's some maths involved, and so if that's not your thing, skip forward to this time zone and I'll sum up the whole thing in one sentence. I need to start by explaining how I learned to make oxalic acid strips. Back then, these were a very new thing and I found a bee forum for commercial New Zealand beekeepers where they were discussing this subject, people were experimenting and uh, quite a lot of beekeepers had put up posts with what they'd done and how it had worked and each one of them was doing it quite differently. One of the members on the forum actually condensed all of those posts into one place for, because for a new beekeeper going onto that forum and trying to learn how to do this it was very difficult because you didn't know where to look. So he condensed it all into one post where he said so and so does it this way and so and so does it this way and so on and so on and so on. Long story short the mix that I use for oxalic acid and glycerin came from that forum. So I didn't invent it, I simply learned from my fellow beekeepers. So what was the mistake that I made? Russell explained to me on his visit that the ideal mix for glycerin and oxalic acid is 40% oxalic acid and 60% glycerin by weight. And those two words, by weight, are the key to why what I'm doing is different from the way he is currently doing it. I make varying sized batches of mixture to soak strips and you can see the recipe that I use in many of my videos. It is 500 grams of oxalic acid to 750 mils or three quarters of a litre of glycerin. As it happens, if you take 500 and 750, that works out at 40-60, 40%-60%. But I didn't ever actually calculate those numbers based off any kind of 40-60 formula. It just so happens that that's what those numbers add up to. However, that's not by weight. If it was 750 mils of water, that would weigh 750 grams. But 750 mils of glycerin weighs more than 750 grams because it has what we call a specific gravity of 1.25. So 750 mils of glycerin actually weighs 938 grams. So I'm putting 500 grams of oxalic acid into 938 grams of glycerin when you look at it by weight. So instead of it being 40-60, it's actually 35-65. Or to put it another way, I'm diluting the oxalic acid more than the way Russell recommends. To make a batch that would do about the same number of strips as the batches that I've been doing in the past, if I keep the 750 mils of glycerin constant, I'd need to increase the amount of oxalic acid that I put into the mix from 500 grams to 625 grams. So if you're with me so far, to sum it up in one sentence, I wasn't putting enough oxalic acid in my mixture, according to Russell. 
Now, I accepted what he said at face value. We went on to chat about a whole lot of other things. I had a look at some cool new products that he's got out there and that are on the market. And then he left to carry on on his trip. Then I started thinking about what he was saying. And I started doing some maths. I started reading his website. And I found something quite interesting. The first part of my thought process was, what I'm doing is working. If it's working, can it be wrong? The second part of my thought process was, hang on a minute, I put four strips in a 10 frame brew box. I'm pretty sure that Russell only puts three. So I checked his website and sure enough, he's recommending three strips per 10 frame brew box, except if that brew box is crammed full of brood, eight frames of brood or more, in which case he recommends four strips. Now, as I said to him in a later email, very few of my hives ever get to the point where they have eight frames of brood in one box because I'm running a deep and a three quarter double brood box in my hives where I overwinter them and right through the summertime. And plus I'm a, a queen breeder and I make nukes. So I am robbing my hives relentlessly of brood. So they very rarely get absolutely crammed up with brood like that. So I can see why uh, in my instance, the way I was doing it was working. But actually, that probably also applies to most of you too. Not that you're doing splits and making queens, but that it's not that common for a hive to build up a huge amount of brood. The only time I don't put four strips into a brood box is either A, it's a five frame nuke, in which case I only put two strips in, but that's actually just the same as putting four into a 10 frame box, or if it's a, quite a weak hive. Now it might be weak uh, for a number of reasons, might have swarmed, might, have, might be a, a young hive, but if it's only got one or two frames in it, I'll reduce the number of strips that I put into that hive down to three. So what is the impact of three strips versus four? So I did some more maths. I'm not gonna bore you with the details of the maths, you can check it out yourself if you want. The recipe that I was using puts 7.14 grams of oxalic acid into each strip. The stronger recipe that Russell's recommending puts 8.93 grams of oxalic acid into each strip. If I put four strips into a hive with 7.41 grams on each strip, that's a total of 28.57, so 28.5 grams per brood box. If I was to follow Russell's recipe and put three of his strips in, each one containing 8.93 grams, then each 10 frame brew box would get 26.79, let's say 27 grams. So actually, the way I do it, I'm putting more oxalic acid into the hive than the way Russell is recommending. But there's also another significant difference. I'm putting four strips in, he's only putting three, which means the area of strip inside my hives is greater. The bees have got more access to the oxalic acid. Going from three strips to four strips is a 33% increase in the surface area of strip that the bees can access, which is very significant. 33%, that's a large jump. So part of me is saying, actually, the way I'm doing it is better than the way that Russell was recommending. Having said that, I'm now using his cardboard strips and what it means is I'm what I'm saying in my videos doesn't agree with what he's recommending to people who buy his strips. And so uh, I can understand why he wanted to talk to me about it. Okay, all of that was really technical and a lot of maths involved. I took the time to explain it because Killing mites is really important for beekeepers and small differences in methods can sometimes lead to big differences in results. I'm pretty confident that the way I'm doing it is as effective as the way Russell recommends, if not more so. Having said that, beekeeping is about learning. Russell is very experienced and would I be foolish enough to ignore his advice? Good question, how foolish am I? So what am I gonna do? 
You might find this surprising, but I'm going to leave my next steps up to you guys. I want you to tell me what you think I should do. Should I bump up the dose or should I leave it where it is? Before I wind up the video though, I just want to point out the stubborn part of me says it's working, don't fix it if it's not broken. Plus, this is the way I do it, why should I listen to the way somebody else wants me to do it? On the other hand, the accountant in me, I do have an accounting degree, the accountant in me says, and I went off and checked my facts before I proceeded to make this bold statement in a video that's going to go around the world. Here in New Zealand, the cost of the additional oxalic acid to shift my recipe up to the brew that Russell uses is one cent per strip or four cents per 10 frame brood box. So there's no economic reason not to change what I'm doing. What I could do is bump the recipe up and continue putting four strips in every 10 frame brood box. So those are my choices. Stick to my guns and continue doing what I've been doing. Bump the recipe up and reduce the number of strips I put in as per Russell's recommendations or bump the recipe up and continue putting four strips in. You tell me which of those three you think I should do. Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. <music>